How do Parkinson's disease specialists make this diagnosis? The diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is made primarily through a clinical history and a neurological exam. Specialists follow international criteria established by the Movement Disorder Society, MDS, published in 2015, which is based on three steps. First, we confirm that the patient has Parkinsonism, which means having slowness of movement, bradykinesia, along with a decrement in amplitude or speed of movement during repetitive testing maneuvers, and at least one of the following, muscle stiffness or resting tremor, typically in a foot or hand. Remember, Parkinsonism can be caused by many diseases and conditions. The most common is Parkinson's disease itself, but there are many other causes. Even certain medications that block dopamine can cause Parkinsonism. That doesn't necessarily mean you have Parkinson's disease. Once clinical Parkinsonism is confirmed, we look for supporting criteria, such as good response to levodopa, presence of dyskinesia, involuntary movements like dancing caused by levodopa, resting tremor in a hand or foot, or loss of sense of smell. The more supporting criteria present, the more likely the diagnosis is accurate. Now, if you meet any of the following exclusion criteria, you most likely do not have Parkinson's disease. Instead, you may have something similar, such as atypical Parkinsonism or another condition that mimics Parkinson's disease. These are the absolute exclusion criteria: cerebellar abnormalities, ataxia without explanation, such as uncoordinated walking, limb incoordination, or abnormal eye movements typically caused by cerebellar disease, limited downward vertical eye movement, symptoms affecting only the legs, use of medications that block or eliminate dopamine, no improvement with levodopa despite having at least moderate disease severity, sensory deficits localizing to the brain cortex, for example, not being able to identify an object placed in your hand, progressive language difficulties, progressive aphasia, a normal DAT scan. If you have two or more red flags, you should consider another diagnosis because it's unlikely you meet the clinical criteria for Parkinson's disease. These red flags are rapid progression of walking problems requiring a wheelchair within five years of symptom onset, no progression after five years, unless clearly due to effective treatment and high intensity exercise, severe speech issues that make you unintelligible, severe swallowing problems requiring a feeding tube or soft food diet within the first five years without another explanation, breathing difficulties during inspiration, like noisy breathing, blood pressure dropping more than 30, 15 points upon standing within the first five years, severe urinary retention or incontinence within the first five years without other explanation, more than one fall per year during the first three years due to balance issues, hand or neck contractures, e.g. forward flexed neck, within the first 10 years, no non-motor symptoms, such as sleep issues, bladder problems, depression, anxiety, constipation, etc. After five years of disease, asymmetric reflexes with no explanation, symmetrical symptoms, meaning there is no one side predominantly affected, Again, if two or more red flags are present, it's unlikely you meet the clinical criteria for Parkinson's disease. Lastly, even though biomarkers like skin biopsy, Sinwanti-1 test, to detect pathological alpha-synuclein are not yet included in the official criteria, I believe these tests will soon be part of the diagnostic process. The current criteria were published 10 years ago and are still in use today. We're waiting for updates, so stay tuned for advances in technology that will help physicians make more accurate diagnoses, because without an accurate diagnosis, we can't provide the right treatment. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and share it with others. See you soon.